I'm going to give you four quick examples, two good and two bad, of wayfinding signs in municipalities, just to whet your appetite a little bit for what we're going to talk about here. I've got an example from Toronto here of a fingerboard sign. It's got all the destinations that we might be sending people to, various destinations and districts, uh, retail areas, etc. And it's got walking times to let people know how close all these places actually are. And then we've got an interior sign here that we designed for a spot in downtown Dartmouth in Nova Scotia, indicating all of the various elements, ferry terminal, bus service, and it's a very big facility. So this is uh, an example of, of a good interior system that we're, we're quite proud of. And then two bad examples, we've got one is in New Brunswick where there's just too much information. There's so many different destinations that are being presented. This is a vehicular sign, so it's for people in cars. And as you're reading the sign, you're at a T intersection and cars are building up behind you. And it's probably very stressful to look at a sign like this and try and decide what it is you're looking for and how to get there. It's not clear, it's just too much information all at once. And here we've got a temporary sign for a ferry terminal in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, which is just terrible, arrows made with tapes. And it's not clear whether you're supposed to go through this door. The whole idea with wayfinding is we're supposed to be welcoming people into public spaces, making them feel comfortable where they are and with the decisions they're about to make. So this sign uh, doesn't meet the standard for us, even as a temporary sign. And uh, we suggest all those considerations matter. And the next chapter I'm going to get into beginning with the end, and it'll be about thinking back from a final state where signs are installed and how you have to go through all the steps to get to that point as a municipal administrator or planner.